Hello, my friends. My name is Carpo, and welcome to Carpo's Guru Corner. How do you know I'm a real guru, you may ask? Well, it's pretty obvious. I mean, I have flowers sitting next to me. I have some incense, and I even have a crystal right here. And with these three things in combination, you can be assured that the teachings I'm going to give you will be accurate and correct, 100%. I'm going to free you from the bondage of your negative emotions by purporting to know what I'm talking about. Okay, I can't go too far into the sarcasm here, <laughs> but, uh, and I'm definitely not here to uh, dismiss anyone's beliefs. So, I'd like to start off with kind of a preamble here, and a disclaimer, that I'm not here to knock anyone's beliefs for the sake of knocking anyone's beliefs. I'm here to try to save people from damaging their <laughs> their wallets first and foremost because self-help gurus, these classes, courses, they're expensive and I've talked to several people who have spent far too much money trying to better themselves through these self-help gurus and groups and one person just the other day said they spent over $10,000 and that was a drop in the, in the bucket compared to somebody who sent me a message a couple of years ago saying that they'd spent over $100,000 on courses and crystals and therapies and healing sessions. So of the many people who tend to speak negative on the New Age movement, if you will, what I've found is that whether you read articles or watch videos, a person will start talking about how wrong the New Age movement was, and how deluded they were by it, or perhaps they were never deluded by it, but... Um, and, and then halfway through the video or article, they will proceed to tell you that now they've found Jesus. And so, in other words, they've given up one belief system for another, which puts them in a bind. It forces them to have to disprove their own old beliefs. And so, when they're making a video exposing the New Age, let's say, and they're now a Christian, often it's they are doing it as almost an obligation, almost to themselves, to say, well, you know, I can't believe I was fooled for that long. Well, this goes both ways. Many people leave religion for the New Age, too. And I don't want to get too far into the details of what I mean by New Age, and I'm definitely not saying that there aren't any energies and powers or um, unknown, you know, factors to intention. I mean, I understand that placebo heals the body. Why? How does it work? We don't know. Our minds seem to have an integral role in our own bodies at the very least, and limited studies to show whether our minds can affect things outside of our bodies, but it does seem that there are energies that we don't understand, subtle energies. That's as far as I'll take it at this point, because we're still learning. But there are a lot of folks out there who will take $200 per session to tell you they know what they're talking about. So many times these people are almost trying to convince themselves. So. Here's a person who says, well, I have ancient knowledge, and I can teach you these things. I can teach you, you know, how to find your true center, you know. And so, I'm going to make a, start, start off here by reading some of the catchphrases that I came up with. Because I took a couple pages of notes, just things I wanted to remember, and I probably won't get to even half of them. But uh, these are the words I'm talking about that a lot of people like to use. Quantum. Field. Energy. Unlock your potential. Strings or string theory, vortex, ether, star seed, indigo, secrets, truth or universal truth, harnessing, chakras, abundance, balance, true self, ancient wisdom, vibrations, astral, ethereal, frequency, toroidal, realm, dimension, paradigm. All of these are key bullshit words that people are using to sucker people into believing that they're product actually works. Now here comes here comes the uh, you know the onslaught of people saying, but what if people believe it works? What if it does work? What if it's the intention that works? That's not what I'm trying to dismiss here. I'm dismissing those people, those shameful charlatans who are actually charging people money for these things. They need to be called out. There's a fair price for your time and effort. You know, if you've spent a couple years in your life learning to harness some universal energy and you can decide that your time is worth $200 an hour, I would beg to differ. I mean, there's a certain amount that's needed for people to succeed and to be happy in life. And uh, some of these people are living in mansions and making a hefty amount of money, but the ones that aren't, or that live on meager incomes, will justify by saying, well, I don't make that much money. 
but you're still making money off of somebody else's hopes without any actual contribution. Here's the thing. Individuals have the power. You have the power to change. In, in the same way that Christianity took the idea that supposedly Jesus said that you all have the power within you to be just like me and that you can harness your own inner truth. And somehow the church twisted that to make you believe that you needed them to reach that truth. And this is what's happened with newer beliefs too. If you can, And they're not newer beliefs. What they are is they're harnessing old primal ideas of where people want to be. And um, so... <laughs> Let's see, you can gain followers without wearing guru clothes, but it definitely helps to have a nice robe and, and a piece of land and uh, a book uh, that you go by or some sort of a study or an idea about the universal creation. But this is nothing new. And, you know, I'm really doing this for the followers, the people who tend to think that, for example, you know, I've had people say things like, oh, you could be a guru. I'm like, don't fucking believe my bullshit. I'm just a human being. I'm being honest with you. I don't know much. And Socrates, you know, wasn't it he that said, you know, um, he who, you know, knows the least, I can't even remember the quote at this moment, uh, but uh, the, the greatest wisdom lies in knowing you know nothing. And that doesn't mean that you know nothing, obviously. It just means that you give up trying to prove what you think is true and, and, and that it's right. And my belief is that many of these, um, you know, say energy healing or... Uh, there's some truth to some of it, but we're not quite sure how much. The question should be, if these things really work, they should rely completely on donations and not on charging people for these things because, uh, well, you know, <laughs> what else can I say? You know, I know somebody's going to be offended by this. I know people that I've talked to who, who either do healing or receive healing, and I'm not here one to say that it doesn't work. My question is, is the person healing themselves by their own intention? And if so, is draining their wallet causing more turmoil in their lives and buying things they can't afford and hoping that it'll make them happier when in the end not having enough to actually survive on or enjoy some of the finer things in life? And uh, when you look at some of this, the, the idea of the law of attraction, it, so often it relies on people saying, oh, do you want money? And... Uh, you know, abundance shouldn't have anything to do with money, but we know money represents energy in this society, and that that's what people mostly need. Now I've even seen some of these guys like this Scalar Energy, this uh, uh, Tom Palladino guy who's, you know, put on his website now, oh, opioid addiction, can cure that from remotely too. Here, just send me your picture, and I'll think good thoughts, and it'll heal you. And, you know, it's... <laughs> Here's some of the things that they'll use, you know, the, the idea of symbols, artifacts, and talismans, and written word. And often these these charlatans don't even realize they're charlatans, and that's the problem. They really think that they hold this power, and it becomes an ego trip under the guise of, oh, I've lost my ego, I have no ego. And it's just so obvious that they're trying to overlook their human aspect and pretending like they're ethereal for some reason. But... Uh, most of these gurus who take your money, uh, they, they work on the idea that you're not worthy on your own. That you're not worthy enough to discover things on your own. And that's insulting. Because when you ask for actual substance, most of them can't give you anything except suggestions. The Zen masters of old, they would propose questions to you for you to figure out on your own. <laughs> you know, they wouldn't give you the answers to anything because nobody has the right answers to your questions except you and through experience and unfolding and understanding. You can get tips and help from other people by observing how others have succeeded and failed. But ultimately we're on our own trip and on our own journey here. Um, so why do we have to, you know, why, why, why do we have to refer to others' beliefs? Why can't, why don't we feel confident enough in believing that we can really truly feel truth within our hearts? And it goes back to this idea that's harnessed of ancient wisdom. And, you know, I, I can speak on this because I fell for it for a while, you know. I was really interested in what did the ancients know, and what did they have that we don't have. And then after all my research, I came to the conclusion that they didn't have anything that you can learn. There's nothing that a person is holding in the written word that they couldn't, sh that if they share it with you, it's going to change the world, like some magic hymn or chant that's going to open everything up or bring out the demons. It's, but 
if there are harnessable energies, it will take practice. It's a training issue of training the mind. And the question becomes, are you training your mind to become deluded, or are you actually, you know, doing something, putting something forward? There's not a lot of evidence to support many of the claims that have been made through history as far as supernatural-wise, and the only reason I've become a skeptic is because it's healthier for me to ask what's really going on, not just what do I want to be going on. Because life and what's really happening isn't always comfortable, but it's more important that we understand the truth behind it, I think because then we can find the little gems that aren't provable or the things that maybe there is something to it. So by eliminating the wild cards, you end up finding out what's really true. <clears throat> I mean, using these vortex catchphrases and, you know, chakras and chakra balancing, you know, how much is that is the intention of the person? I don't know. But uh, many of these supposed, like, ancient practices and healing modes were created, say, less than a century ago. Uh, you know, I don't want to get into the specific ones because uh, it would just take too long. But some of this comes from the idea of wanting to save people or be saved. Like that people are yearning for this understanding. And almost some of these, what seem like these teachers that I see, not, you know, either they know what they're doing and they're making a profit, or they really are truly believing that they've figured something out, when in fact it just seems so transparent, t to me anyway, that uh, they're unsure of themselves. And if you present a question, sometimes some of these people get angry with you or frustrated, like, don't you know, maybe you're just not at my level yet, you just don't get it, you haven't evolved enough, you haven't transcended your earthly realm, or you haven't evolved enough, you haven't lived enough lives here on this earthly plane, and that I'm a... I'm a Satori, you know, I've been through my Satori, and that I'm an ascended master now, and, you know, yada, 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 prove it. I mean, what good does it do me if you're an ascended master? What do you really have to teach that I can't learn on my own? And that's what it really comes down to. Um, so there's no right or wrong way to do many of these practices, many of these workshops and classes. If you go in and check out a few different ones, you'll find out that they're all different in their own way. You know, um, you can grab different crystals and give them different, you know, meanings and say this one wards off energy and this one brings in good spirits. But then you start searching for the roots of where this shit comes from and there's nothing there. There's nothing there. I mean, very small bits and pieces from other cultures which were also deluding themselves and trying to figure it out. And it is important to know that, I think, because then you realize it doesn't matter if I'm holding a crystal or a piece of plastic. It's the intention of what I put in it that matters, if anything. And that should be more empowering to people to realize that that means that, you know, all of these talismans and special power artifacts, you know, it's really in the eye of the beholder. And knowing that, it means everybody's equally entitled to the same power and the same mindset as the next person, if that makes sense. Um, if you don't believe the people, often they'll just tell you you're in denial or you're closed-minded. I've heard that too many times because uh, I've, you know, I've been on the new age type, you know, the fence. And uh, to tell you the truth, I love burning incense. I commune with nature. I talk to the woods. I believe that there's a universal energy and a universal mind that is conscious in its own way. Um, I believe that there is power given to objects and talismans, but I don't pretend to understand it. And, uh, you know... If you can show me anyone with a new truth, then I'd be willing to look at it. And I'm saying, anybody out there who is saying, this is a new discovery that will change your life. Not just reformulating the same old jargon that you hear in old Buddhism and Hinduism. And the more you look into religion and you look into ancient cultures, you find, uh, you know, if they were hiding some great ancient wisdom, it should be obtainable by us too, in today's world, in, in my opinion. So uh, everything should just be right there, you know? What is hidden? And why is it hidden? It can't be hidden in words, because words don't do justice to existence, you know? So, um, the only one I was going to say, you know, they, they want to, a lot of people want to sell you their book. They want to sell you their, you know, their cleansing programs or their, you know, whatever they've got to sell. And if you want to try something like that and you think it might work for you, then I say so be it. Try it out. See what works. Just be wary of the price. Because anybody who truly believes what they're doing is valuable and that wants to help others, 
will not charge hundreds of dollars for one session on the phone to talk to you and to tell you, oh, your energy is cleansed and I pulled the negativity out of you. I know placebo works and I know how mindset works. And I could flick a switch in my brain and say, I'm happy now sometimes if I realize that I'm frustrated. And if you go into a workshop with the attitude of this is going to help me, of course it's going to help you. And that's fine. Just make sure you're not spending too much money. And uh, what this has turned into is things like life coaches. A life coach. You know, that's just bullshit to me. I'm sorry. I've talked to a couple people who claim to be life coaches. I don't see that as really a worthwhile job if you want to be a counselor or you want to help people out by you know, finding their own nature. I guess I'm being generalistic there by saying that all life coaches do the same thing, but just using that title, it's like, it's like a coach sits on the sidelines and, you know, puts everything together, makes sure that everything's going right in the game, you know, and most people don't even know their own truths. I mean, they don't even, we don't even know where we're going as individuals. So, I'm not saying that it's not a valuable thing. I'm saying just be very aware of Who's teaching you what and how much you're listening to? Because I'm sitting here telling you random things from day to day on this channel, and I'm open-minded enough to consider new ideas, and I'm also uh, honest enough to say that half the time I don't really know what the hell I'm talking about, because in a couple of years I might change my mind and say, no, I did discover this new truth. You know, Maybe I'll find some crazy healing mode or energy and say, oh, what I thought was wrong, you know, was actually right, or what I thought was right was wrong, and that's okay. You know, I'm willing to go with the flow on that, but I'm much happier being an open-minded skeptic that's like, show me the money, <laughs> than, uh, than the kind of person who just goes along with whatever sounds great. Oh, really? Oh, this'll heal? This'll fix me? This'll heal me? Fix my life? So, um, that's why I'm making this. Not to so much shame the charlatans, or even the deluded, but rather to say that if you're spending money that you can't afford on things like this, hoping that it'll help you, um, just be wary. Because people spend huge amounts of money on self-help. And this doesn't isn't always just gurus. We're talking fad diets and the bullshit media promoting all this crap, you know. Try this new herb and try this new, uh, you know, food and, oh boy, weight loss plans and all this, you know. We're always listening to each other because... But we really got to look at the meat of where's the evidence and how much do we have. And this is where science might save our asses sometimes, but science gets in the way of itself too. So hopefully I've covered enough of the randomness. Um, there's a whole lot more that I could say, but it doesn't make much you know, sense. I'm, I don't want to criticize or be harsh. Um, I just felt I needed to get that out. So we can find our own truths within. We just have to be willing to look. And if we're going to give up our energy to other people to look for us, then we're going to get exactly what we have coming to us, which may be their way of life. And maybe it's not as good as our own way of life. So be your own guru. Follow your own heart. But use the wisdom of those around you to build your temple, the strong foundation. So be you. Talk to you all later.